Hi, boys and girls. This is Mrs. Skamitz. I'm a second grade teacher here at Shoreview, and I get the opportunity to read Chapter 5 of Fenway and Hattie. So get your books ready, and we're on page 37. Chapter 5. When it's morning time outside, the doorbell sounds again. Intruders! Watch out! I barked, rushing over. A vicious dog is on patrol. Despite the very obvious risk of danger, Fetch Man opens the front door. A lady human is standing on the porch. Next to her is a short human, about the same size as Hattie. She is wearing a cap, exactly like the front Fetch Man's. Only hers has a long, wavy tail hanging out the back. Hello, the lady human sings. She's holding a basket that smells like warm muffins with cinnamon. Wowee, I barked, running in circles. Muffins, muffins, I love muffins. Muffin lady laughs, a friendly laugh, and talks for a bit. Neighbor, I hear her say. Food lady hurries over, full of happy chatter. I hear her say, neighbor, too. She welcomes them inside. I jump on their legs, sniffing furiously. The short human smells amazing, like bubble gum and fetch man's fat leather glove. And dogs! Golden retriever and another breed I can't quite identify. Muffin Lady smells even more strongly of dogs. Familiar dogs. Food Lady is smiling at Muffin Lady like she's her best friend. Did I mention she's carrying a basket of muffins? And they smell so warm and cinnamony. I leap higher and higher, my paw batting her knee. Muffin Lady startles, but sadly, not even one muffin spills out of the basket. Fenway! Fetch Man scolds. He turns to Muffin Lady, shrugging sheepishly. Puppy, I hear him say. Muffin Lady laughs again and says, Rambunctious. That must mean she likes me because she stoops down and scratches behind my ears. My humans are wincing in horror. What do they have against a dog making new friends? Food Lady snatches the basket and wraps it in her arms like she's trying to protect it. Fetch Man rushes to the stairs and calls for Hattie. Why didn't I think of that? Hattie! Hattie! I raced over. Great news! Muffins! Hattie arrives and steps into the lounging place. I trot along behind her, my tail swishing wildly. Fetch Man puts his hand on her shoulder. Hattie, he announces. Muffin Lady grins and taps the cap of the other short human. Angel, she says. Angel glances at Hattie. She mutters something like a greeting. Then her gaze drops to her feet. Hattie edges closer, smiling and hopeful. But when Angel does not look up, Hattie smells disappointment. The next thing I know, Food Lady herds everyone down the perfect running surface and into the eating place, except me. I slump down on the carpet outside the doorway. The humans gather around the table. Pretty soon, they're all chattering. Have a good time and munching on those muffins. The warm scent of cinnamon taunts my nostrils. My eyes spot lovely crumbles near Hattie's feet. My belly aches. I'm hungry too, you know, I whine, looking at them with sad eyes. And I sure do love muffins. Muffin Lady and Angel glance over with puzzled faces, like they've never seen a starving dog before. Hattie grabs a muffin and starts to get up. Here it comes. I spring up in happy anticipation. I slurp my chops. But Muffin Lady holds out her arm, and Hattie sits back down. Training? Muffin Lady asks. Food Lady and Fetch Man look embarrassed. Fetch Man shrugs. Too busy, Food Lady says. What could it mean? It can't be good, because Hattie has clearly given up on bringing me that muffin. Instead, she stares straight at me and leans out over her knees. Fenway, she calls in a sweet voice. Whoa, is she nuts? Does she actually think I'm going to run onto that wicked floor? I slink back down and lower my head, my gaze firmly on my short human. 
Muffin Lady pats Hattie's arm and nods in approval. Hattie holds out a chunk of muffin. Fenway, she calls even sweeter this time. That muffin looks so yummy. I sink, sink down deeper into the cushy carpeting, my tummy empty and rubbling. This is not how my Hattie behaves. She's supposed to, be, to bring it to me. It's all so horrible. Plus, they're having fun without me. There must be something I can do. I get up and wander around, trying to think. And before I know it, I'm at the sliding door. Aha! Why did I think of this sooner? Hurry, hurry, I wail, jumping up and scratching the screen. Somebody let me out right now! It works! Hattie and Angel appear at my side. They open the door and we all zoom through. The short humans blast down the steps and I'm right behind them. I'm ready for fun. The grass is wet and puddly. Still, no signs of other dogs. But it could be worse. At least there are no squirrels. Hattie and Angel have a head start, but I'm up for the chase. I'm hot on their heels as they run through the grass. Of course, I'd rather be chased than being the chaser, but sometimes it's okay to mix things up. But when Hattie and Angel get to the giant tree, they stop. I get a bad feeling. Hattie points at the way up high leafy branches. She shows Angel the laddery steps on the back of the trunk. As I'm barreling over, Hattie starts climbing. Come on, she says. Angel smiles, but she smells hesitant. I leap up, pawing the bottom rung. No fair, Hattie, I bark. We can't play chase up there. Come on, Hattie says again from halfway up the trunk. She's obviously heading for that little squirrel house again. I collapse into the soggy grass with a groan. Angel sighs, then begins climbing up after Hattie. I'm still watching long after the short humans disappear into the leafy leaves. I'm about to go sniff around some more, but then my ears perk to wonderfully jingling sounds. Hooray! Hooray! The dogs are coming! I get up and trot over to the fence. Through the slats, I see two of them romping around in the dog park next door. Um, hey, hello, I call. The dogs stop mid-romp and gallop over. Fenway, says the white one in her lovely voice. I told you he'd be back, said the golden. Sure enough, it's those same two ladies. Are they the only two visitors to that dog park? And why don't they have... Why don't they come to this one? Great memory, I say. So, uh, have you two been coming here for always? They exchange glances, then they look back at me. What do you mean? We live here, Goldie says. I cock my head. You live in a dog park? Goldie gets an irritated look and opens her mouth. But be before she can answer, Patches says, Was that our short human you were trying to chase just now? What? No, it was mine, Hattie, remember? Oh, we remember, Goldie says with a growl. How did you say it? Super best friends? You do everything together? Isn't that right? Patches rolls, rolls her eyes at Goldie. Then he turns back to me. I mean, Angel. Wow, she's your short human? No wonder she smelled like Golden Retriever and whatever kind of dog Patches is. Well, she used to be, Goldie said. I looked at her sideways. Isn't she still? Technically, yes, but things change. Patches lowers her head. In the beginning, she was fun, a lot like your Hattie. We walked to the river and play fetch. I believe it was the pond, and we played frisbee, Goldie corrects. Fact is, Patches says, a faraway gleam in her eye. She used to be great. I thought she would always stay that way. Goldie scowls. I knew it wouldn't last. As I recall, you were awfully fond of her, Patches says. We both were. She had a lot of potential, like most short humans, Goldie said. It's so tragic, Patches says. Short humans never stay interested in anything for very long. Sad but true, Goldie huffs. They go from one thing to another without even looking back. Nowadays, she acts like we're not even here, Patches says, a little yelp in her voice. Goldie paws the ground. She's totally forgotten about the good times we used to have. Gee, that's such a bummer for you, 
I say. But not all short humans are like that. Hattie's different. Goldie snorts. Are you sure about that? You don't know her. She's completely devoted to me. I insist. She's the best short human ever. Maybe that's how it was before, Goldie says, drawing out the last word. But it doesn't look that way now. What are you talking about, I say. But when I gaze up into the giant tree, I have my answer. Hattie's smiling face is poking out of the squirrel house window without me. And a massive boulder crushes my heart. And that's the end of chapter five. I hope Fenway's heart isn't crushed too much. Can't wait to find out what happens next. Have a good day, everybody.